I trust God that you will be blessed. Amen? Amen. And the title of my sermon is hashtag Heart Matters. Amen. I knew, I knew most of you relate to the hashtags. We've been learning about service, serving and obeying God. So we're just going to continue along those same lines. Amen? Amen. And you know there's, okay, the timer is here, so I'll not miss my time. There was, there was, there was a certain preacher, he never used to keep time. So him and his wife came up with an agreement that, oh, if you don't see me looking this side today, it's too bright. There's, there's a pink color just. <laughs> ah, amen. amen. Right. <laughs> God. And I saw, I saw a certain gentleman today, the way he was dancing, I will not mention his name, but you will see at the end. <laughs> God is good, amen? amen. So, this, so this, this, this pastor and the wife, they came up with an agreement to say, you know what, I'll give you a, I'll give you a suite that you'll put in your pocket. So when it's time for you to start sharing, just unwrap the sweet and put it in your mouth and be sucking on it. When the sweet finishes, you know it's time up. So what happened is as Josephine was leading praise and worship, the man of God was dancing and suddenly the button came off from his shirt. So he took the button and he put it in his pocket where the sweet was. So now when it was now time for him to minister, he, un he took the button. And then, as he was ministering, he kept sucking on this sweet. So I'm not sure today if I picked up the sweet or the button. But God is faithful. Amen. Amen. Um, so we've just been learning about serving and obeying God. And you know, usually when we think of service and obedience to God, especially as young people, it, it feels like it's, it's a hard task. It feels like God wants us to do what we don't want to do. God is going to tell me to go and stand up during jilling, during lunch hour and stand on a table and say, that says the Lord. That's, that's, that's the idea we have when it comes to obeying God. God is going to tell me, take that iPhone 11 that you just got and go and give it to the pastor. <laughs> I mean, when, when, when we think of serving and obeying God, that's usually what comes to mind. That God wants us to do what we don't want to do. That God wants us to do what is painful. But that is not the kind of God that we serve. God is a loving God. And anything that God asks anyone to do, it is never meant one to embarrass you. God is not in the habit of embarrassing people. But any instruction that God gives to anyone, at the end of the day, is for our own benefit. So even today, as we are gathered here, many of us are here for different reasons. Some, a friend just said, let's go to church. And you're like, you know what? Let's go. It's a Sunday. Plus we're in China. What will I do? <laughs> for others, you genuinely, you woke up, you're like, you know what? I really want to go to church. I want to, I want to fellowship with other brethren. But whatever reason we have for coming to the house of God. It should always stem from a love for God. Some, maybe the pastor gave you a call and you're like, today I have to show up. Otherwise, Pastor Malik's again, I'm tired of giving him excuses. But everything that we do in the house of God should always stem from a place of loving God. Amen? Amen. So just a quick recap. The past three weeks we've had We've had many speakers coming and sharing powerfully the Word of God. Uh, I think the first week we had Mr. Emmanuel and he talked about the benefits of obeying God's commands. 
And in that he highlighted that, you know, when, when we obey God, it is us who benefit. When we obey God, the benefits are ours. Brother Victor last week, he, he asked the question, does God need anything from us? God already has everything. So if anything that God desires from each and every, or each and, from any of us, we are the ones who benefit at the end of the day. Pastor Milex came and he shared about serving the Lord with all your heart. Josephine, as she kept sing, singing here, she would say, sing it like you mean it. In other words, she's just saying, sing with all your heart. Serve the Lord with all your heart. And last week we learned about service and obedience. Amen? Amen. So today we're just going to add another block. And I'm going to try and be very fast because I know our attention span is usually very short. But before I continue, did you hear that I was promoted from being deacon to being doctor in a few seconds? <laughs> Some of you are studying four years. First, I'm already an honorary doctor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So you know, the state, the state of your heart is very important. Because the heart, the heart answers the question, why? Why do you do it? Many of us here, we've had friendships or we've done something. Have you ever been, with doing, have you ever been trying to do someone, something with someone and you can see this person is not in it? And you literally just say, you know what, you're not in, you're not in this. Yeah. If I could speak with the, way, with the slang Bobo was using yesterday during the seminar. Those who don't know, those who are not in the seminar, you don't know. You're just not in this. I'm not feeling it, right? So if, if we're serving God and it's not coming from our hearts, like we read, God can just simply see that, you know what, you're not in this. You are just here, but you're not in it. And how do you feel when you're doing something with someone and they're just not in it? You're trying to work with someone, but they're just, they're just there. Someone says you become foolish. Furious. Furious, furious right? Yes. Just thank God he's, he doesn't become furious. You know, let's quickly read Psalm. Sorry, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel 15, 16, verse 7. It says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on, on his height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not man as not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. We come to church every Sunday, we worship God, we praise God. You're playing the guitar, you're playing the instrument, you're singing a song, you're ushering, and we're looking and we're saying, wow, this guy, this girl is really serving God. But probably God is looking at you and saying, you're not in it. Because God is looking at the heart, he's looking at the why. Why are you doing it? You've come to church. Yes, you've done well. It's important to come to church. But the benefit is in the why. Not in the what. The what is good, but the why is more important. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far away. We are singing withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender all to you. But God is saying you're singing with your lips, but your heart is far away. So the heart is very important. Amen. You can just note down Matthew 23, verse 5. It also highlights this, this matter. Proverbs 4, 23. It says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. So when you talk about service and obedience, today I just combined them and I came up with a single 
sentence. Serving in obedience. And what is it? Is it be living according to the stand, someone's standard and their instruction? And the, our standard is Jesus. When we read in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, Simi says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising its shame. So Jesus is our example. So God is not asking us to do something that Jesus himself never did. Jesus served in obedience. Amen? Amen. And if we just also read Philippians 2 verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. So Jesus himself walked in obedience to the Father. And he says he humbled himself, he walked in obedience even up to death. Many of us, we have not even reached that level where it's a life of death. Do you love God? I'll kill you. Do you love God? <laughs> so I'll go um, um, but Jesus obeyed even up to death on the cross. Why? Because his heart was in it. His heart was set on obeying God. Amen? Amen. So our instructions, you know, for there to be obedience, there has to be an instruction. You cannot obey something that you have not been told. So, you ask yourself, so what are these instructions? The word of God is filled with instructions for the believer. These are not rules and regulations. This is just what God is saying. If you follow this, you will succeed. He said to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate upon it day and night. Then your way shall be prosperous and very successful. So the word of God is simply instructions for success. If we hear today that uh, Jack Ma is coming for a seminar, he's hosting a free seminar for foreign students only, and he's coming to talk to you about the secrets for success, this place will be packed. The stairs, mom team will even have to set up projectors on the stairs because everyone wants to know the secrets to success. We want, we want that money. <laughs> but the word of God is saying, here are instructions for your success, for a good life, good health. If you obey these instructions, amen? Amen. So when we look at the word of God, we don't, we don't need to look at it as, okay, this, here, here's, here's, this, here's this big monster who is here just to make me do what I don't want. But here's this loving father who has laid out instructions for my success. And why I say this is because many of us, we are, we are young people. We've left home and we've come to China. It's now free. We're now free. We can do. There's a song somewhere that I once heard. We can do whatever we like. <laughs> don't pretend like you don't know it. <laughs> I can give some of you the mic and you can finish the, the, the rest. But you know, the word of God does not remain where we came from. The, it says, the word of God is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. This same word works wherever you choose to apply it. So the question is, while you are here in China, where is your heart when it comes to serving and obeying God? Forgive me, I'm not, I'm not a very hyped up preacher. I just enjoy talking to to people. I think it's easier for people to remember when we talk. So, when we obey God, it's simply doing, it's simply pleasing the one who has sent us. 
that is, that is what service and obedience is. Pleasing the one who has sent us. So if whenever you are in doubt about what can I do to please God, what can, what can I obey, just say, how can I please God? What would make God happy today? So it's not also about doing what suits us or what is the popular thing. Because many of us, we come to church because at, during that season, it is the popular thing. It's what everyone is doing. If I'm not at church, for we have what, what we call a FOMO. You all know what FOMO means, right? I know the older generation, you don't know. Us young people. <laughs> FOMO is just a fear of missing out. So you do things because you fear missing out. Not because you want to do it. But you're just scared if I'm not there and then those pictures are now being posted and I was not there. <laughs> so our service to God is not out of the heart, but it's out of the popular thing. Then the season where it's no longer popular to come to church, we also decide, all right, it's no longer popular for me to do it. That simply shows it has, it has never been a part of your heart. It was never something you desired to do. So serving, and serving in obedience, in summary, is just simply serving God from your heart, with all your heart. As Pastor Milex preached last week, for those who are not there, the mom team has provided the videos on YouTube. Please feel free to, to go and look at those videos. So you know, when, when we look at instructions, the instructions that God gives the church, when we read the Bible, the Bible is filled with instructions for the church. But there is also an instruction for an individual. Amen? Amen. And you are the one who is responsible for fulfilling your own instruction. Nobody else. Genesis chapter 3 verse 12. I love this verse. It says, And the man said to the woman, And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. <laughs> God was asking Adam, why have you eaten the fruit that I commanded you not to eat? And he says, hey, God, this woman in the pink dress, <laughs> she came holding a fruit and dancing, and I couldn't resist, and I ate the fruit. And that's what many of us do. God has said, Specific instructions for you. But you're not doing them because a friend has said, why are you doing it? It's a waste of time. We are ready to push it to somebody else. God, it is the pastor. The pastor's message is not exciting enough for me to follow your instruction. God, it is the church. You know, until they buy a new keyboard, I'm not joining the praise and worship team. <laughs> ah, those backing vocalists, ah, no. Why are, you not, why are you not in the mom team? Ah, God, they're not using the new MacBook. <laughs> we all have, we, we've got excuses yeah. for why we are not serving God. There are things that God is, and I'm just giving church examples. But maybe you've got a neighbor in, in, the, in the dormitory and God is simply says, take this paper and go and share it with your neighbor. Inviting them to church. And you've been looking at it saying, no, what would they think of me? God, my social graph will go from 10 to 2. If they know I'm a Christian. But that's your simple instruction. So what is it that God has instructed you? It could be a song. It could be an outfit that you've been meant to design.
Let's take it out of the spiritual setting. There are instructions for us everywhere. In your career, God is constantly speaking. You are there at the hospital and God is telling you, go tell, go tell the brother, go, go tell your, ne your nurse friend that it's going to be okay. And you're like, no. Not knowing that that's the very word this person had they heard could have stopped them from experiencing something tragic in their own lives. So God is speaking to us every day in every scenario of life. And that instruction is an answer to someone else's prayer. Amen? Amen. So, and we should never compare our... Uh, Sister Lucy was here and she talked about preaching, praying for three hours. Me, I, I, I can pray, Pastor. But three hours? <laughs> I'm still growing. <laughs> but imagine I start comparing myself to Lucy. Because she prays for three hours, then... I, I don't think I'm good enough because I, I, I pray for 30 minutes. God, I'm not good enough because the praise and worship team, they practice every day, but I never come for practice. Our journeys are different. But what's important is for us to realize, what is it that God has assigned for you to do? Well, the reason I'm just sharing this message today is because this is the start of a new semester. We've got so many new people that are coming through. You've come to China, you can decide I'm going to sit back and do nothing. It's possible for us never to know that you are in church or not. Your parents back home may never know. But it's not about your parents. It's not about who knows that you are in church or not. But it's about you. What is it that you desire from God? And where is it that you want to take your own life? Amen? Amen. So our journeys are different. So our decision to obey and serve God must not be dependent on everyone else. If it's a Saturday morning prayer and you really feel today I need to go for prayer, and you go and knock on Debbie's door, and by the time you knock, Debbie's on some. Ah, cha challenge. Today I'm not going. Do you decide, you know what? I'm no longer going. <laughs> you know, it used to be so irritating. My wife and I we enjoy traveling. So we, we plan we plan trips as groups. So you know you're like four couples and you're planning a trip. And then you plan, you plan towards towards the time you're supposed to travel. Oh, so guys, let's let's put the money together. First couple, um, you know, actually, <laughs> something has come up, so we can't. You know how frustrating it is when you're, pl you're planning to do something and people just start dropping out. But then we decided that, you know what, whenever we say we're going to do something, we're going to do it whether the people we are planning to do it with do it or not. So if we're planning a trip, we have the money to go along. But if people decide to join, then at least we're going to divide the expenses. Because we saw, you cannot live your life dependent on what everybody else is doing. So people from my campus today are not going to church, so I'm not going. We need to, you, need, you know, just need to know, get to a place where you know yourself and God. Who is God to you? What does it mean for you to be in the presence of God? You know, you just get to that place where, okay, my friends will find me there. If they don't come, that's up to them. Amen? Amen. When we look, let's quickly just read Acts 4, verse 18 to 20. I'm loving my time. Prosper. 
says, and they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. So who do you give value to? When it comes to serving and obeying God, all you're saying is, God, you are, you are supreme in my life. So anything that takes me away from your instruction, I'm going to ignore it. Because I would rather obey God and look like a fool than to disobey God and be the fool. Because, you know, when, when we understand that obeying God is for our benefit, you know, many of us here, we can look at certain times in our lives where we've disobeyed God and things didn't go well, not because God was punishing you, but you made your own choice. And then you realize, this was the wrong choice. I shouldn't have done this. And then we're now trying to go back to fix everything. But when we just learn to obey God, we begin to see the benefits of that. Amen? Amen. So, we serve God. Serve God where you've been instructed to be and not where the crowd has pulled you to be. Amen? Amen? Let me just repeat that one. Serve God where He has instructed you to be and not where the crowd has pulled you to be. I think that's self, self-explanatory. We can be pulled by the crowd. You know, come to praise and worship team. We are the ones that people see on Sundays. If you join, if you join welfare department, no one ever sees you. Welfare department, they only see you selling dirty clothes. <laughs> come to pray, come to praise and worship. But you, but you, you know your heart, your heart, your your heart's desire is to serve God in the welfare department. But praise and worship. Guys, you know, praise and worship and mom team, I think these are the coolest departments. Because you are here and everyone is watching you. Or you are like Munashe there with the camera and everyone is like, hmm. But when it comes to service to God, it's not about where the crowd is pulling you to. But it's about where God has instructed you to be. Those who are studying medicine, there are certain departments that are not as exciting to be in. You have, God, has, God has given you a passion to work with the elderly. <laughs> and you know, working with the elderly, it can, especially when they can no longer clean themselves up, it cannot be exciting. But that's where, that's where your heart is. That's where you feel fulfilled. But then you meet, you meet, you meet, you know, especially... If there are people who can convince people in this life, my Nigerian friends, <laughs> then you will meet one of them and they'll be like, no, 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 that department is not the one for you. Leave it. You know, let's go to pediatrics. We play with babies singing head, shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> and you decide to leave that, but not knowing that the blessing that God had for you was working with the elderly. So it's very important to serve where God has placed you. In your heart, you know where it is. The one person we can never lie to, you can never lie to yourself. You know if you're forcing yourself into something or... And let me just say this, it's out of topic. But please people, don't enter into relationships because people are saying you make a cute couple. Yes. 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 Yes.
Your skin color, you and brown, brown skin. You know, pretty, you, you, you know that I'm not ready for a relationship. But because everyone is saying, this is China, my friend. If you're alone, find someone quick, quick. But let's move on. Amen. There's a, there's a relationship seminar coming up in a few weeks. So each of us, we are answerable for our own assignment. Yeah. We are not answerable for the assignment of another. We are students here. If, if we are in a class together and Jerry is having problems putting his software program together, if I go and help him with the software program and it works, that's good, right? I've shown kindness and generosity. But then if I then go to class and I have not done my part, and I say, no, Laoshi, Jerry had a problem. So I spent my time <laughs> helping Jerry. What happens? You fail. Many of us, we are busy running with what everybody else has been sent by God to do. Yes. Ignoring what, you, what God has placed in your heart. So it's important just to find that time and say, God, what is it that you have placed in my heart? Job 36 verse 11 it says, If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Years in pleasures. How do you define pleasure? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> if you obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. So anyone who ever told you that serving and obeying God leads to poverty, that's a lie. Anyone who ever told you that serving God makes you unpopular, that's a lie. The Bible is filled with examples of people who had individual instructions. Abraham, he was told to take his son Isaac to go and sacrifice his only son. And you know, many of us will claim the promises of Abraham. Father, God of Abraham, you are my God, you are my father. God of Isaac. But those people, we celebrate them today because of, a, of obedience to an instruction from God. Mm. We'll celebrate Jack Ma and we want the blessing of Jack Ma. But Jack Ma had to go and sit down and do something to get to where he is today. Mary the mother of Jesus, she had her own instruction. She had her own journey. Peter, Paul, Samson. I will not read the one with the D. <laughs> Esther. <laughs> so now as a church, there's an instruction from God which is very important that I just want to share in the time I have left. It's the instruction of love. Amen? Amen. If we look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40, it has been touched on in the past preachings, where it talks about the commandment from God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Then it says the second commandment is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is the instruction from God. So if we say we are walking in obedience to God, and you've been wondering... I'm what, I don't know what to obey. Love God and love others. 2 John 1 verse 6 says, And this is love that we walk after this commandment. And this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. And then 1 John 4 verse 7 to 20 Right, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this, in this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, 
Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he with us, because he hath given us of his spirit. Okay, and I'll just jump to verse 20. It says, If any man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Amen? Amen. In the church, we'll preach many things. We'll preach many revelations. We'll talk about the Holy Spirit. But all these things are centered on love. When I preach like this, am I preaching to be seen? Or is it out of love? It is God who can see that. When I sing, am I singing to get your compliment? Okay, though I don't sing. But is it out of love for God? Or out of love for the saints? Amen? So service and obedience to God is linked to people. If you don't love people and you say you are going to serve and obey God, it's, it's impossible. Because every instruction from God is linked to people. I cannot preach to an empty room and say I'm obeying God to preach. Who am I preaching to? <laughs> if you walked in here and I'm preaching to myself, you'd be like, hey, there's a crazy man in there talking to himself. So every instruction from God is linked to people. So as a church, we are instructed to walk in love. Practical ways to serve God through serving others. Sharing the gospel with a friend. You know, you tell the truth, preaching to people and giving them things that are impossible to do, you would have wasted your time. So I've tried to make it very simple so that even when you leave, you know simple things that you can do. Serving in the church. That's serving God through serving others. I am not paid though for being here. I have not been paid. You know if someone is being paid for doing something, you can say no, he is doing it because he is being paid. But you love God to the point where you are like, God, use me to serve others. Praise and worship, they will come and meet you on a Saturday to practice so they can sing beautifully, worshipping God. But they're actually also serving us. Because if they sing badly, we're the first to say, Hey, hey Pastor, <laughs> what's going on with your team? When you care for a friend, care for family, that's serving God through serving others. When was the last time you met someone here in church and during the week you just said, Let me check up on that guy. Let me find out how are they settling in China. When you pray for someone, that's serving God through serving others. When we visit and encourage each other. These are practical ways that we can serve God. We'll talk about, I mean, it's so easy to talk about many things. You should preach the gospel. You should come and you should pray. You should pray for many hours. You should read your Bible the whole day. You should, you should go to the mountains and pray. If God leads you to doing that, Fine. But for me, God, please, no mountain. <laughs> but there are simple things that God instructs us every day. You're walking and it's just, you know what? Someone, you know, sometimes you see someone is struggling to carry things and you just said, go and help that person carry this thing. That's actually service to God. There's a story that is told. It's about being kind. This person, well, he worked in a, in, a, in, a, in a market, say like Walmart, and he was a teller. So then what happened is this old lady came to buy groceries. And after, this, after the lady bought all the groceries, he was like, you know what, let me help you carry this stuff to, to the car. I think it was actually raining on that day. 
So he helped this lady take the things to the car. And then this lady was actually the grandmother, the mother to one very rich businessman in America. And this man was setting up an office and they needed to buy furniture for the office. And the grandmother got home and told her about this person. Oh, this, there's this young man who just helped me and I don't from this shop. Did that shop also had a department where they sell furniture. This man came and they said, you know, I want to furnish our entire organization and we want to get things from your shop, but I want this gentleman to help me. They were like, no, 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 that's not his department. He's a teller. And they said, if it's not him, then we're taking our business elsewhere. I want him to do it. So, sometimes acts of kindness to other people, you never know where it will lead you. It's not like you're doing it. So, in conclusion, we are called to a life of service. John chapter 12, verse 26 it says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. So there is honor in serving God. And one thing I've decided to do is, I've, I've, you know, I've told God, God, if you are real, then when I serve you, whatever I do, when I walk in line with your commandments or your instructions, I should see your reality. You know, it's, it, it's boring to come to church and pray to a God that you never see. But imagine when we start experiencing God in our individual lives. You know, when we are worshipping Him and saying, you deserve the glory, you know what that means. Many of us, we are trying to crank, to say, pray, sing with your heart. They have never experienced Him with the heart. So they don't know. But when you, when you experience God, worshipping Him, it just flows out. Amen? Amen? The power and the gifts, everything that God has given to us, everything is simply for service. You have a gift to sing, you have a gift to minister. Everything is just linked to serving God. Amen? Amen. And then finally, serving and obeying God is just simply being conscious of Him wherever you are. When you're in school, you're conscious, I'm a child of God. God, what can I do to serve you? Right here where I am. And it's a matter of identity. When you know who you are, what you do, just flows from who you are. When you know you're a child of God, serving God just flows from that identity. So it's important to know who you are and to know that we are children of God. And that is the identity that defines us. So anything that you do is no longer about asking, is this, is this right or wrong? But it's just about knowing I'm a child of God. In this, in this situation, how am I serving God? Amen? Amen. Finally, Psalm 100 verse 2 says, Should I read it from here? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Amen. Amen. Um, we can stand up. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. You gave your life to Christ. You said, you know what, God, I love you. You are Lord of my life. So because you've made that decision, serve Him with gladness. I decided to marry my wife. So I'm supposed to enjoy the marriage because I decided... I decided to marry her. So as we, as, even when we come to the presence of God, let us worship God with gladness. Because it is us who came and we said, God, we, we are here for you. We are here to worship you.
So, if you can forget anything that I talked about today, today, when you get home, just pray and say, God, look at my heart. I want to serve you from my heart. I want to worship you from my heart. Anything that I do, I want to do it from my heart because I love you. Amen? So let's just lift up our hands and just pray.